One of the best things at the county fair was the hog calling contest. One at a time, people got up on a stage and then they yelled, Sui, pig, 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 as loud as they could. Then the judges decided who did it the best. <laughs> I bet you could do it too. You might even win the trophy. Tell you what, I'll sing a song about the hog calling contest. And when I sing, Sui, you sing along. Old Dan Tucker, he's the champ, he sure puts on a show. A calling for that big old hog, this is how he goes. Suey, 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 big, 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 suey, 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 little pig. Edna Mae's the challenger, she sure got quite a voice. When she calls that big old hog, he hasn't got a choice. Quirky, let's sing our song again. 
Good idea, I said. Maybe this time Dad will hear us, just like Corky. And so we all sang our song again. <laughs> Even my little brother helped out. But I think you better help too, just to make sure my dad will hear us. Sweet grass to eat, 
but sometimes the children were naughty. They bounced up and down on Pippin's back, or pulled on his tail, or worst of all, they yanked on his ears. But Pippin never bucked or tried to throw them off. Though every now and then, he did wonder what went on outside his little pony corral. Sometimes I wish I was wild and free, said Pippin to his best friend Misha the monkey. Misha was a magician's monkey and got to roam around wherever he wanted. He had lots of friends all over the fair. Well, I can fix that, said Misha. How, said Pippin. Easy, said Misha. Tonight when everybody's asleep, I'll unlock the pony corral and you can go free. But where will I go, said Pippin. Anywhere you like, said Misha. That's the whole point. Will you come with me, asked Pippin. Sure, said Misha, it'll be fun. So that night, when everybody else in the fair was asleep, Misha came to the pony corral and found Pippin. Are you ready, he asked his friend. I guess so, said Pippin. There's just one thing I'm worried about. What's that, said Misha. What if we get lost, said Pippin, and can't find our way back home? Oh, don't be such a party pooper, said Misha. Come on, let's go. So Pippin pushed open the gate with his nose, and Misha hopped on his back. And off they rode to find out what it was like to be wild and free. There was a full moon that night, so Pippin didn't have any trouble seeing where he was going. Only problem was, he didn't know where he was going to. Let's head across that field, said Misha. I think the town is pretty close by. So Pippin got a long running start and jumped over the fence into the field. Whee, said Misha. Isn't this fun? I guess so, said Pippin as he tried to get his breath back. Pippin had never jumped over a fence before in his whole life. Now head straight for the other side of the field, said Misha. Then we'll have to jump over another fence. But suddenly, Pippin and Misha heard a noise behind them. What's that, said Pippin. It sounds like a bell, said Misha. It sounds like a bell on a bull, said Pippin. And then they heard the sound of running hoofbeats. And then they heard grumbling. And then they heard snorting. And then all of a sudden, they saw a huge black sheep in the moonlight. It is a bull, cried Misha. Look out! Well, the only other bulls Pippin had seen were at the fair. And they were always fat and sleepy. But this bull was angry. I guess we woke him up, said Misha. I guess so, said Pippin. What should I do now? Keep running for the fence, said Misha. And then jump over it as high as you can. So that's just what poor Pippin did. He ran as fast as his little pony legs could carry him. Jump, cried Misha, jump. And Pippin jumped as high as he could. He landed on the other side of the fence, just as the bull crashed into it. Don't stop now, cried Misha. So Pippin kept on running. But after a mile or two, he slowed down to a trot. Do you think it's safe, he asked. Oh, sure, said Misha. Nothing else can happen now. But Misha was wrong again. Something else did happen. It started to rain. Oh, no, cried Pippin. My nice clean coat will get all wet, and my shoes will get all muddy. What will the children think of me when they come for their rides? There won't be any rides tomorrow if it keeps on raining, said Misha. But that's just it, said Pippin. I could be home right now, all snug and dry in my pony trailer. But instead, said Misha, you're being wild and free. And wet and miserable, said Pippin. Then let's go home, said Misha. Do you think they'll take us back, said Pippin? Sure they will, said Misha. How many ponies will let kids bounce up and down on them? And pull their tails, said Pippin. And don't forget yank their ears, said Misha. Do I have to let them do that, asked Pippin. No, said Misha. Just buck a little. They'll get the message. Okay, said Pippin. Then let's head for home. So Pippin turned around and happily splashed his way through the rain and back to the fair. This time, he went around the field with the bull in it. And by the time he got to his pony corral, the rain had stopped. Well, said Misha as he hopped off Pippin's back, we'll have to do this again sometime real soon. I don't think so, said Pippin. From now on, I'm going to be a pokey little pony at the county fair. That's wild and free enough for me. Golly gee, wasn't the county fair wonderful? Too bad it only happens once a year. <laughs> but you know what? We can go whenever we want. All you have to do is turn my tape over and I'll be talking.